With season four of the Funding Love Adoption Podcast with Mal and Kate. We are two adopted moms that seek to love, support, and elevate all corners of the adoption triad while running our nonprofit, Funding Love. Funding Love creates post-adoption experiences that strengthen bonds, build community, and restore people. And the Funding Love Adoption Podcast exists to bring education and awareness to those both inside and outside the adoption community. So pour yourself your favorite beverage and pull up a chair because everyone has a seat at our table. Together, we are Funding Love, the podcast. Welcome back to season four of the Funding Love Podcast. This is episode three, and today we have an amazing episode for you. I'm wearing my It's Not Always Rainbows and Sunshine Mm. Funding Love Adoption Tea because adoption is not always rainbows and sunshine, especially when you are thinking about home studies. Oh, how terrifying. Doesn't that word just like send the shivers down your spine? Yes. I remember, oh my gosh, I remember for when we were doing ours, I I probably texted you and all of my friends who've ever been through it. And I was like, today's home study. I'm terrified. (laughs) And I don't know why there was so much fear, but we're going to talk through all of that and like the big questions of home study. But thank you. I just want to say for tuning in and um, just remind y'all, please subscribe because it helps us and it helps our future listeners. That's right. So Home studies is just a scary word. I feel like that part in The Lion King, and I know she's a Lion King girl, where he's like, Mufasa. And you're like, ooh, do it again. Mufasa. I'll do home studies. Yeah. Home studies. (laughs) (laughs) So we want to help you because we have gone through the home study process. We have had episodes about home studies, and we have seen lots of adoptive families come through their home studies and actually have a positive experience. So we want this episode to not only be helpful, but to be encouraging as well. That's right. Because it sounds scary, but it's not. Just just I'm gonna I'm gonna burst the bubble. It's not. It's not that it's scary. not that bad. It's not that bad. Yeah. So what we're going to do in this episode is ask probably the questions that are on your mind. Those yeah. big, hairy, scary questions about home studies. We're gonna ask them and then we're also gonna answer them. Mm-hmm. We're gonna try our best. So why don't you ask the first big, hairy, scary home study? Ask it you. What is a home study? <laughs> What is a home study? I think you should answer that one. (laughs) I can answer it. Okay. So what is a home study? So a home study is, I guess it's just a personal, this is how it feels. It's like a personal (laughs) investigation of of your home, of yourself, of your family, of everything. It's, it is where there are agencies who are specifically um, licensed to give home studies. So our home study provider was not the same as our agency. So we actually Mm -hmm. went through a different home study agency, I guess is what you call it, home study agency. Um, And they, you have to fill out like this massive questionnaire. There are like lists and lists and so much of paper. I remember when we had to do home study, we had to renew our home study for our second. But for the first one, I was like, you know, I'm going to take this weekend and I'm going to say, I'm going to make this a home study weekend. I got my favorite snacks. I got some stuff and I just filled out all the paperwork. Mm -hmm. So it is, I guess, a report of you in your current state, and also it feels like everything in your past. Correct. Financial, physical health, family relationships, marriage, jobs. Everything. Yeah, Basically, it seems like your home study is the vetting that the agency is doing to make sure that you, they know who you are, that the expectant mother would know that they're placing their child in a good, healthy home. Some wackadoodles. And no wackadoodles allowed. (laughs) And so a home study is really just an agency doing their due diligence in knowing who is coming in to adopt a child. That's right. I mean, it seems very intense. um, And you you often wonder, why are these asking these questions? So I'm going to ask you the next one. Why do they ask such personal questions? And give me some examples of some personal questions that you had to answer in your home study. Personal questions. Like, like, like they get into your family tree too. How is your relationship with your mother? (laughs) How is your sex life? They ask that. Uh, How is your physical health? And will you take a, you have to take a physical. You do. You have to get a physical from a Mm -hmm. physician. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, They will ask all kinds of personal questions, personal questions about your income, personal questions about your neighborhood, uh, family relationships. Like I said, not just your mother, but with your siblings. Siblings. Um, Where do they live? Are they married? Do they have kids? How is their marriage? I got asked, yes. that, like, how is yes. your sibling's marriage to their spouse? So it, it goes pretty deep. Um, and have you been married before? How long were you married before? Why did you get divorced? Like all of that. Mm-hmm. Your and, education history. Mm-hmm. And also, like, if you have 
children in your in your home, I think that are 12 oh, yes. plus, mm -hmm. like biological children or even adopted children, and you're in your home currently, you have to, if they're 12 plus, I think they even need background check okay. and fingerprints. Okay. So you need to do fingerprints. So there's a lot. But so the personal questions, why do you think they ask those? I think that they are really truly trying to do their due diligence and figuring out who you are as a person. Okay. I don't think they're trying to be invasive as in like, we're trying to catch you. They're not trying, they're not out to get you. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that your home study it's agency or the person that is conducting your home study is not out trying to find something wrong with you. It can feel that way at times, but that's truly not their goal. Nope. They want you to be able to fulfill your dream of being a parent. They want a child to be welcomed into a loving, healthy home. Mm -hmm. And so they really are for you, but they do ask these personal questions in order to really get down to the root and figure that out. So I'm just going to say like, you know, we might say this again, but be honest about it all. Because it might sound weird and you might feel like, well, I'm not going to tell them the full truth. Mm -hmm. Just just do. Yes. Just do because you don't want to get caught in a situation where it sounds like you're lying or it sounds like you're making something up. So just be honest. It's, mm -hmm. it's probably, you know, they've done hundreds of these. So them asking these questions are nothing. And like Mal said, they're not trying to trip you up. They're so just, really just be honest and it'll be it'll be what it is. Yeah. I, I remember uh, the agency that we went through and our our social worker that mm -hmm. was working with us through our home study, she told us, she was like, I know it sounds invasive and I know it feels uncomfortable, but we had to do a written report. And then we also had personal interviews. Like we did an interview together as a couple and yes. then we did separate interviews. Oh, wow. Okay, and we, do that. we did. And I remember her saying, just write it all down. If you write it all down, I'll have to ask less questions. Oh. So it'll make the personal interviews go a bit smoother, a bit easier, especially on things that might feel uncomfortable to talk about, like yeah. your relationship with your father or your sex life. So being able to write it all down, just be honest and be open and know that it's not going to be blasted anywhere. It's not going to be kept on a public record somewhere for people to go look up. They're just doing this to get you to that next step of adoption. So they they even ask about like medical history. Have you been hospitalized before? Take medications? Why do you take medications? All of those things. Mm -hmm. So they ask all of those. Honestly, what else do they ask? I'm trying to think in my head what else they asked. Um, I, rem I remember I remember them asking about hospitalizations that, like I said, but I felt very intrusive. Like I was like, why do I need to tell them that? Answer that for me. Right. I, I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I guess they just want to know your medical history to just know that you're healthy enough to parent a child, which the I odds guess. are you are, right? So I, again, I don't feel like they're trying to trap you in any way, but mm -hmm. they do want to make sure that they are also yeah. protecting themselves from legalities down the road. I think it's scary what I've heard from friends before is when they ask about mental health mm -hmm. because they do ask about that. And that feels a little bit scary too. Like, are you going to be disqualified if you struggle with depression or anxiety or you or take anxiety. an anxiety medication sure. or, or yeah, or you take a, that seems like scarier and more daunting for people than I think just saying I've been hospitalized for a ankle fracture, you know what I mean? Or whatever it is. But I think we can go ahead and clear that up and say, no, no, that's not going to be a it's disqualifying be factor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this was a big, hairy, scary question for me. And I know that it caused a lot of anxiety for me, but throughout the home study process, they do have to come into your home. And so my question was, <gasps> Does my home need to be perfect? Does it need to be like this Pinterest the beautiful yes. thing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So get painting, girl. That wall has stuff wall all paper, over it. New pillows, new rug. You need it. Yes, you need it. No, you right. don't. No. no. Um, it feels that way. And because we're all want to be the cutest, we will <laughs> all try to make our house the cutest and make it look cutesy dootsy with all the flowers and pillows and stuff. So like. It doesn't hurt. And if that makes you feel better, please do it because it made me feel better. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember I had like a bowl of chocolates and I homemade cookies and I had like. A oh, wow. You really showed me up. I did. I was nervous. And so I was like, OK, well, I better have something here for her. And I remember when she showed up for the home visit part, she's like, no, I'm good. <laughs> she's like, I brought my own water. Thanks. And then you're like, oh. She's like, I'm not eating everybody's cookies. What do you I think I am, Santa Claus? <laughs> yeah. So no, it doesn't need to be cute and perfect at all. That is not a disqualifier. I would say, to be honest, they they don't, just like any home, clutter does speak, like clutter and, and hoarding and packing. And like, I would say if you're that, a hoarder. <laughs> that, but that speaks to a level, I think, of unorganized 
nature, but I wouldn't say it's a disqualifier. But no, I would it's just not. say having a neat, tidy home is does it trumps having a cute home. Sure, I think. Yeah. That, yes, I yeah. think having a clean, hygienic home uh, mm. trumps having even a tidy, cute home. Yeah. Uh, if you have toys scattered around and a pile of laundry in the master bedroom, no, those are normal things, That's guys. Nice. Yes. But if you if your room smells like Mold. Your dog's duty on the carpet, <laughs> or you know, like you those some other those issues, are different yeah. issues. But honestly, you know this already, so yeah. you're not if you know you're going to clean your home in an appropriate way. We just know it, but it's not something to be nervous about. Yeah, I remember her saying because they do have to open every closet. Okay, they do have to open every cabinet just to look, and there's certain things they're looking for, like you have to have a fire extinguisher, working fire alarms, um, all of those like. Things you want in your home anyways, right? Uh, we needed a, um, what do you call that? Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. That was on our like, okay. checklist to have. Uh, if you have stairs, that yes. was a big one for, for us. We had stairs in our home. You have to make sure that all the spindles, they have to make sure that they're not loose. loose. So if you've got, you know, the balcony o- overlooking your living room, some of those spindles are getting on their last spindle leg. Yeah. Go ahead and replace some because they do want to make sure that if a baby is walking by, they're not going to fall through Obviously, those are great checks, and obviously, you would want that if you have a baby in your home anyways, Uh, but those are the types of things they're looking for. Um, They're not out to find the skeleton literally in your closet. They're just doing your checks. You do not have to have a perfectly folded and categorized linen closet. They're just making sure that you're not hiding paraphernalia or illegally storing guns in that closet. Yeah. And if you have a pool and you have access to a pool mm-hmm. of your house, I would just say do the due diligence of being able to speak to what your you alarm would have. system like is. If you already have, if you already have kids in your home, you can speak to how you keep that safer. Mm-hmm. I would even recommend putting up a pool fence already before. Uh-huh. But if you don't have a child and this will be the first child you welcome, I would say just speak to the plan that you will have in place. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we already have, we're going to put a pool fence around. We have alarms coming. Be able to speak to that so that they know that you're diligent about that safety. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So yeah, I would I would say that those are some things that, but yeah, it doesn't need to be well, tiny. Like if you didn't unload the dishwasher and you have a sink, you have a cup in the sink, no. Mm-hmm. And then also speaking to that home portion of your home study, the other big hairy scary, scary question I feel like is like, does the nursery need to be ready? Do they? Mm-hmm. Does my baby that we're hoping to bring home already need to have a room? Uh, and the answer is no, no, mm-hmm. no. You do not need to have the crib ready with all of the the clothing folded in the drawers. You do not need that. Um, you just need to tell them your plan. Yeah. I remember when, when we had our home study, our very first one home home visit, our nursery was not ready, but we knew the room it was going to be in. And we said, so this is the room we're going to, you know, we're, we're waiting a little bit, but this is going to be the room. We felt like just our own personal thing. Adam and I wanted, before we got it totally ready, we wanted to have like a match. And I don't know why we had the, we had the crib, like we had the crib. We just didn't set everything up yet. Yes. We just felt like it was a part of maybe our own waiting journey that we didn't want a full nursery set up. So mm-hmm. um, we didn't have it set up, but we spoke to, yeah, this is where it's going to be or whatever. But even if you don't have a dedicated room, you can say, oh, the baby's going to be in our room for the first six months. This is where we're going to put the baby and this is where, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So just once again, and- be able to speak to it like you know it. Correct. You're doing you and expecting. You have a plan. And you, you're you not going to be disqualified if your baby is sharing a room. So if you're no. like, the yes. infant is going to stay in our room for the first year, and then once they turn one or 18 months, they're going to move in and share with their sister. Sibling, yeah. That's a plan. Yep. So do not feel like you have to have this perfect baby room all set up in the perfect shade of green because it that's not what they're looking for well, either. Could- and we want to acknowledge that everybody is going to go through the adoption process in their own emotional way. Yep. And you need to do what is best for you. Like Caitlin stated, some people are like, I cannot put up that nursery and have an empty nursery sitting there as we hear all these no's or we've had, uh, we've had to, the matches fall through yeah. and uh, or she chose to parent and it's really painful to see the nursery set up. You don't have to have it set up. Right. Or you might be the opposite. And you're like, the day we applied, I already had the the walls painted. That's okay too. So there's no wrong way to go about that that waiting and journey and preparing for your baby to come home. No, there so. isn't. So that goes into our next question. Do you need to have a big home? No. Nope. Just like you were saying, you don't need to even have a dedicated room that's going to be a nursery. You don't need to have this grand driveway with this beautiful porch and a five-bedroom home. And you you don't need to be 
the perfect family with the perfect everything. Mm -hmm. You just don't. Let's get that, like, you know, we're going to say that again, but like, you really don't. Like, you don't need a big home. You don't need to impress in that way. Um, Ultimately, what they're looking for is stability. They're looking for stability, a plan, um, just, I would say, an overall healthiness of the way that you live your life um, to know that this future child is going to come into a home that has stability, has uh, organization and love, safe and love. Yeah. So that, Mm -hmm. that is really that. um, So this goes, do you need to be, do I need to be wealthy? Do Do you need to be rich to adopt a baby? No, no, no. The answer is a big bet. No. Yeah. Are they looking at your finances? Yes. Do they want to know that you can financially provide for another human in your home? Yes. Uh, But does that mean that you can afford them the nicest shoes and they have Nikes at two months old? No. Mm -mm. No, you don't. One thing I will say that I think they do, you know, want to make sure that you are aware of is that having, being able to speak to the funds to fund your adoption before you adopt. Because I not to say that you need to have all of the money in your hand, but to speak to a way of fundraising that you're going to mm-hmm. grants you're going to apply for. Um whatever you whatever way you you plan to fund your adoption. You don't want to say, no, I don't have a dollar. Yeah. I think they want you to from being through it enough and I and I think I, I've heard people who, uh, the, even the woman who's d- did our home study, she wanted us to be able to speak to, what is your plan? How are you going to pay for this? Do you know how you're going to pay for it? Because the, it, it ultimately is not wise to enter into that. It costs money. It does cost money um, to do it. So you want to be able to speak to how, whether are you alone? Did you apply for a loan? Is the loan going to help you? And that's totally okay if it is, mm-hmm. because that is a way to fund adoption. Mm-hmm. But you just need to have a plan to be ready to speak to it. That's it. Right. That's it. So you don't need to be rich. You just need to be able to know. Um, a plan. And you, yes. yeah, they don't want you to be in oodles and oodles of debt. Not even that. That's a disqualifier. Nothing really is a disqualifier, in my opinion. Right. They're just yeah, getting to know you and deeply getting to know yeah. you in all of the ways. Making sure <laughs> there's no major, major red flags. So mm. another big, hairy, scary question I feel like is, do I need to hide things? Do I need to withhold information like do we need to hide the wine bottles and tell them that we don't have a glass of wine before bed do we need to hide our guns and tell them we don't don't have have firearms yeah okay hiding something is a red flag (laughs) so it is so much better is being a red red flag not being truthful is a red flag uh so be truthful it is not a disqualifier if you keep alcohol in your home and it is not a disqualifier if you have legal guns within your home obviously if you are illegal carrying then maybe don't watch this video we we're in the wrong (laughs) but um yeah we uh, (laughs) you are allowed to have legal firearms in your home as well uh the things that they're going to be looking for in your home study when it comes to items like that is are they stored appropriately is your alcohol stored in a high cabinet out of reach from children uh they will be asking you either way on your home study if you drink alcohol and how often you drink it so you know again be honest but that doesn't mean that if they open up your cabinet and see a bottle of whiskey up there that you're in it, you're disqualified. It's not true. You just need to keep it in a safe place as you would anyways, if you were parenting a child, same with firearms, you need to follow the law of storing firearms. They need to be in a safe that is locked, kept away from children, store your ammo separately from your gun. All those things that you would do if you are a person that knows gun safety anyways. Yep. Um, that is so good. Don't hide anything. Be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I do want to speak about for just the home study from top to bottom is like, what is the process mm-hmm. of okay. like, like okay. how, like how, how what, what to expect in like the process. And timeline too. Yeah. So, and I think it, a lot of it just depends on how fast you get your paperwork done and how fast you do your checklist. So we had a checklist for mm-hmm. our home study. We they gave you the checklist. They said, these are the things you need to do. Um, that would be education. We had to do a certain number of hours of education. So they gave us like uh, links that we would go to and we kind of choose some classes. Some are required, some aren't. I think we need to, gosh, I don't even know. Maybe it was like six, certain amount of hours. six or eight hours each. Adam and I both had to do some of whatever. So um, I chose some that interest me or even I think there was a diversity in like a car seat one that everybody has to do. Mm-hmm. So anyways, you check that off the list. Then you fill out all the paperwork. You acquire that because it takes a while to acquire the bank statements, the tax returns, all of those financial things that they want to know. If you're, you need a physical, like we were saying, you need a physical mm-hmm. uh, from your doctor. We had to take a CPR class. Oh, okay. We did not. We, we did. watched a video. 
we took a class. We okay. went and took a class. Oh, that's so good. They should require that. Mm-hmm. Everybody should. Maybe it's just mm-hmm. a Florida thing. Um, so then after that, we did uh, a local background check. So we had to do a local background check for our county or state, maybe okay. it was. Mm-hmm. And then we also had to do fingerprinting. Mm-hmm. So fingerprinting. Mm-hmm. So once we did all of that, checked all the lists of everything, all the financial statements, we turn all of the paperwork, all of that stuff in. Once all of our background checks are in, fingerprints, local background, they called us to schedule our home visit. So everything, all of the paperwork and all mm-hmm. that nonsense was done beforehand. And then the home visit was like the last thing for yeah. us. So they do the home visit and then they say, okay, we're going to follow this together. You'll hear within whatever, a week or so. Mm-hmm. But I would say the whole thing for me, if I was going full force and getting all done, it was like a month. But if you're going to say it takes me a while, I got to get the paperwork. My husband's traveling, all of these things. It's going to be a bit. I think the first time it maybe took us three months. Yeah. But the second time for my renewal, oh, you already I knew what I was doing. So I was like, bop, bop, bop. I yeah. scheduled everything and we just went. I think it's it's normal. I remember them saying some families will get it done in a month or two. Yeah. Uh, and it's normal for it to take up to six months. So don't put the pressure on yourself if that's just if that stresses you out and it's literally, you're so busy, you're working, you've got the schedule, your husband travels, whatever it is, um, it's normal for it to take up to six months to complete your home study. So that's okay. Um, do what works for you, but that's a great, a great timeline to talk about. Yeah. Um, I did have something else to say. I think a month is fast. I would say like a month would be like a really quick, but it was my renewal. So it was our second time around. Another thing you will need references. You need references. Yeah. So part of that is um, choosing references. And and I think there was like five for Mm -hmm. us that we had to have references. And you sent, we, we sent our references a link and they filled out a a letter anonymously. And then it went to the agency. And then I know this was what I was going to say was for us during our home study visit, something else to expect was for us. That was the time when our social workers sat down with us and we were able to put into writing and put into place because now we're becoming home study approved Mm. all of our preferences and adoption. Okay. So are we willing to take multiples? Are we open to transracial adoption? Right. Are we open to boy, girl, boy, girl, special need from it, from the hospital to six months. If a woman decides to, place a child that she's parented for a month. Um, All of those preferences kind of go, that was discussed at our home study. Was that the same with you or was that done at a different time? I don't recall. I remember, well, we filled all of that out. So we did fill out all of that. And there was like check like, boxes. Mm-hmm. And then there was like, you could you could also like write in like some, your, mm-hmm. your opinions and feelings or whatever. And then it was reviewed. That's. Yeah. It was like reviewed when we were all sitting in a circle. Totally. Like, okay, so I just want to verify if this is your, are we still correct? And so it was more of a verification. But yes, it is good to know those things then be, because I'm going to, I'm going to tell you when we, we did our um, renewal home study. For our second adoption, because we just actually was it a renewal? No, it wasn't because we had to redo no, everything you, again you, because there was time that lapsed. Yeah. So it was never a renewal; it was just a, a new Starting home over. study. Yeah, um, we checked a box wrong, and then we were home study approved. And when I was looking, I was like, "Oh no, I didn't mean that." So I actually had to go and change it. But I believe I had to. There was like a step I had to do, whether I had to get my new form notarized that my new preference was Mm -hmm. that I changed my preference. Um, I had to get it approved by something or I had to get an official letter from somebody. Um, So make sure you're paying attention to the details. That's what I'm saying. (laughs) So be sure to know what you're doing and also to be sure. So so I would say that's probably a good end point for you to know your preferences and to talk about that with your spouse as you you enter in that. Yeah. Long story short. So I think the last question is, is this something that I need to stress over? Uh, naturally, you will, but the answer is no. no. Yeah, yeah. The first time through, I was terrified, mm-hmm. like nervous, like I think lost sleep the night before. And I think no matter the amount no. of videos you watch of people yep. talking about it and the research you do, you're always going to have that element of stress anxiety. and anxiety and worry. Yep. Uh, but we just want to encourage you. We would love to wrap up this episode with just an yep. encouraging word of it's not that big of a deal and you can make it through. It's not that scary. And because there are thousands of people who've gone through before you, so you will certainly be able to go through it and it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. It really is. It's just the minutia of like all Mm -hmm. of those tiny little questions and paperwork that you need that can get daunting and overwhelming because the worst part for me was gathering the financial statements. And that to me was scary is knowing all those numbers and getting all of that. But And we just want to say, 
try to think of it too from a different perspective. If you knew or you were an expectant mom yeah. looking to place her child with a family, you would want to know that the families that you're choosing from when you receive those profile books, that you don't have to worry about whether they could financially care for your child. You don't want to have to worry about if they're healthy people or they, you know, have certain addictions. You want to know criminal that your records, agency, whatever. criminal records, you want to know that your agency has done their due diligence in making sure that these are amazing couples so that then you can choose the family that you feel like fits best personality wise or lifestyle wise mm-hmm. or location wise, other things than like, are they safe? Are they safe people? Yeah, are they right. safe people? Yeah. So that's a good point. Yeah. So don't stress. Um, Always try to just, you know, it's a part of the journey. Enjoy the journey as best you can. I would encourage when you're doing your home study paperwork, dedicate a fun little weekend to it and say, hey, let's order some Uber Eats. Let's get some food. Let's get some snacks. Put on our favorite music and just kind of knock out the paperwork. Yeah. And you'll get it done fast. And it won't be as bad as you think. That's so, yeah, right. don't be scared. Mm-hmm. We did it. So I mean, in it. the words of Mary Poppins, for every job that must be done, there's an element of fun. Indeed. You can Indeed. do this. You yes. can do this. You can do it. Um, <laughs> and thank you all for um, tuning in again for another episode of the Funding Love Adoption Podcast with Mal and Kate. See you next week. See you Cheers. next week. Cheers. <laughs>